Hello and greetings to everyone. Welcome to our webinar this afternoon, Teamwork Makes the Dream Work, What to Know About Your Role as an All-State Coordinator. My name is Sarah Reynolds and I am a Scholarship and College Relations Specialist at Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society. So I see that our numbers are steadily climbing as people are joining in the webinar. So um, we'll give it just a moment for um, everyone to get logged in uh, to participate. But thank you so much for um, devoting some of your time this afternoon to, um, to the webinar that we hope will answer some of your most commonly asked questions about your role as an all-state coordinator. Um, whether you are a seasoned coordinator or this is a new job for you, um, we hope that you'll find this webinar of benefit to you. Um, again, in, in some of the most common questions that you receive, um, we are recording the webinar this afternoon and it will be posted um, in our support library. So um, if you ever want to uh, come back and refer to the webinar in the future, or if there are others uh, who couldn't participate today but wanted to, um, we will have this, uh, this meeting recorded. And we would love to have your participation. So on your screen, you should see a Q&A option. I know we're likely all familiar with Zoom now um, in, in these uh, uncertain times uh, that we're in. So um, it, the Q&A um, option on your screen is what will allow you to ask questions. And we have devoted uh, a portion of the webinar at the conclusion for your questions. So uh, if you do think of some questions or if I say something that you do have a question about throughout the webinar, please feel free to type that in the chat. Uh, my colleagues are also participating in the webinar this afternoon. That's Kristen Ware and Laurie Brown. And they're gonna help me with the Q&A this afternoon as well. So um, again, feel free to participate in that way um, if you would like to. But I'm sure that um, for those of you participating this afternoon, you've often heard the phrase, there's no I in team. And so your role as an all state coordinator uh, is definitely the same way. Um, it doesn't just take um, uh, one person or one group of people to successfully um, execute the all state academic team program. Um, it takes all of us uh, wearing multiple hats um, and, and excelling in those different positions that we all have on the team to ensure that we are um, able to, to be successful in what we're doing, which is recognizing some of our um, nation's most outstanding uh, community college student leaders. And so um, as I move throughout the slides um, this afternoon, again, I hope that you'll um, you know, be able to take away some helpful um, information uh, that will be uh, of use to you. And so what you're seeing here is the actual team. So um, you'll see at the top, you're, you are the all state coordinator. So um, you know, I've listed here um, the different primary responsibilities that you have. Um, and that uh, we have at Phi Theta Kappa as the scholarships team. And then of course our faithful nominators that are stationed on the community college campuses throughout the country. Um, obviously this is not an exhaustive list. I'm sure that you find yourselves um, tackling a lot more um, than what you just see here uh, on this slide this afternoon. But you can see that um, you know, a lot of what we do um, overlaps at times. And so we have our, our own jobs and our own responsibilities, if you will, as, as a coordinator, um, but we also work closely together. Um, and there are times that, you know, we work more specifically with each other. So again, as this slide depicts, um, as an all-state coordinator, you'll work closely with us here at Phi Theta Kappa to really promote filling all of those available nominations to nominators. And so we'll be talking a little bit more about what that means in just a moment. But you and I, you know, we'll be working together to ensure that these nominators um, are really nominating to their fullest potential. And so then you see that Phi Theta Kappa, us in the scholarships department, we work directly with the nominators to promote application completion to students. And so again, we'll be talking a little bit uh, more in depth about why it's so important that these students actually complete those applications and why we do a lot of um, direct pushes and promotions to our nominators and to our students on these campuses about making sure that those applications are complete. And then you'll also see that that you as the all state coordinator work closely with the nominators to collaborate and plan for that recognition ceremony that you have. And of course, that's the exciting time that all of your hard work 
uh, comes together to recognize these students. And of course, the students are at the heart of it. They're at the center of what we do. We proudly serve these students. Um, we know that their dedication and their hard work um, has made them very deserving of the recognition that, that we want to give them. And so, um, you know, we always, um, you know, look back to the students um, for, for all that we do um, in ensuring, again, a successful a successful recognition ceremony and a successful um, all-state academic team. And so let's talk just a little bit more about the nomination process. Um, each college is encouraged to nominate four students per campus. And so that's two workforce pathway students and two transfer pathway students. And so we, we further explain that um, a workforce pathway nominee or a career tech student should be planning to enter the workforce after completing a certificate or an associate's degree. And then a transfer pathway student should be planning to transfer to a four year college after graduation. And so oftentimes we are asked about, you know, the difference in a workforce and a transfer pathway student. And we do recognize that students who transfer on to a four year institution, oftentimes they do work um, while they're completing their, their um, baccalaureate degree at the four year school. We don't consider them a workforce student because they're still continuing on with their education and they're, they're transferring on to the four year school. So they're considered a transfer pathway student. We consider a workforce pathway student to be any student who is strictly um, earning their, their associate's degree or their certificate, and then they're immediately entering the workforce. So they're not continuing on with their education beyond that point. And so um, oftentimes, you know, again, a popular question that we receive of our, of our coordinators and even our nominators is with regard to the workforce pathway. Um, that's um, a somewhat new um, option that we've incorporated into the Allstate program in recent years. Um, and so oftentimes we're asked, how, how do we increase our, uh, our workforce nominations and our workforce student involvement, which is a great question. And so what we really encourage you to do, um, and again, this is from, um, from a nominator standpoint as well, is to connect with those career and technical education people um, on their community college campuses. And again, that's more from a nominator standpoint. So um, someone that's in a workforce um, or a continuing and technical education uh, program, the director of the program, for example, on that community college campus. Um, any vice presidents for workforce development or a coordinator of the career and technical education program um, will have the connections with regard to what students in their workforce program would be great candidates for this would really qualify, um, you know, to be recognized as a workforce pathway student. Um, and so oftentimes they're just more aware of who those great students would be um, that would fit that particular mold of, of what we're looking for. Um, and, you know, it's also a good idea to put those, those people like that um, in that nominating position. Um, so you can have one nominator on your community college campus that could nominate uh, for the transfer pathway and the workforce pathway, um, or you can have different individuals. So you could have one person that's strictly nominating students for the transfer pathway, and then a different person that's going to nominate students for the workforce pathway. And in that aspect, that's when we would suggest that maybe the nominator for that workforce pathway program would be someone like that director that I mentioned of the career and technical education department, um, or that coordinator, again, within that specific uh, division. Um, and so, you know, the, again, those are just suggestions um, and ideas to think about as you're, you know, communicating with your nominators in your state. Um, students must have a completed application to move forward in the judging process. So as I mentioned in the previous slide before about the importance of encouraging application completion, Oftentimes we may have students that start that application, but then for whatever reason, they don't complete it. And so we really, really encourage our nominators to ensure that they're not only, um, you know, communicating the importance of that application completion, 
um, but they're only nominating students with completed applications. And so um, it's not just the job of the nominator. I, I mentioned that the nominator, uh, you know, encourages that of the students, but um, that's obviously something that we do here at, at Phi Theta Kappa headquarters as well. Um, and that's also something that you as a coordinator um, could do also um, is, you know, again, reaching out to these students um, with incomplete applications to encourage the completion of that application, and then more direct communications with your nominators to ensure that they're aware of the importance of only nominating students with those complete applications. Otherwise, that student will not move forward in the judging process if they don't have that application complete. And so, you know, you may have been looking, um, you know, at the previous slide where we kind of listed the, the primary responsibilities of, of your role as an all state coordinator. And, you know, you might have been thinking, okay, I've got all of that, but um, where do I get started? What's my timeline? When, when do I do these things and how? Um, how do I execute them? Well, basically everything um, that you need is on your all state coordinator dashboard. And so the next few slides are just basically going to walk you through how to access that dashboard. And so the screen that you're looking at right now is the Phi Theta Kappa homepage at ptk.org. And you'll see um, at the tabs at the top of your screen there, um, the scholarships tab. If you, if you hover your cursor over that, you're going to see a drop down menu that appears. That first option is I am transferring. And if you placed your cursor over that option, another drop down menu will appear that says PTK Competitive Scholarships. And so if you click on that link, it's going to take you to a page that lists all of the different scholarship opportunities that are funded and administered by Phi Theta Kappa and all that students are being considered for on that fall scholarship application. And so if you scroll down a little bit on that page, you'll see the scholarships listing. And the first option there is all state academic team programs. And you may notice the little blue arrow uh, next to that title. And if you click on it, again, a little menu of sorts will expand there and you'll see a brief description of that all state academic team program. And then you'll see the link to learn more. And if you clicked on that link here, you're going to see two screenshots. On the left side, you'll see that it will direct you to the Allstate Academic Team page. This is where it provides you with general information about the Allstate Academic Team program and a little more detail. And then what you're going to pay attention to is in the top right corner, you'll see the login option. So when you click on that login link, obviously you'll be prompted um, to enter your PTK username and password. Um, if you do not have your password, if you don't remember it, there is an option there to reset your password or you can reach out to us here at the scholarships department and we'll be happy to reset that password for you. But once you've logged in, the page really doesn't change that much. If you'll look on the right side, uh, the right screenshot there, you'll see that the page really remains the same with the exception of the link that you see circled here. And that's the All State Coordinator Dashboard link. So that's going to appear once you're logged in uh, to your PTK account. Now I did go ahead and just include the link here um, to, to the page. Um, you may just want to bookmark that if you haven't already. Um, there are a variety of different ways you can get to your um, Allstate Coordinator dashboard, but um, obviously I found if you just bookmark it, um, that will save you some steps. So um, once you've clicked on the Allstate Coordinator dashboard link, you will then have access to your dashboard. And so again, there is a wealth of information here that's gonna make your job as the Allstate Coordinator uh, run more smoothly and efficiently for you. And so um, the little uh, purple circle that you see there, it probably looks familiar to you. This is what you were looking at in the earlier slide in that it lists the primary roles that you have as an uh, Allstate Coordinator. And so I wanted to actually show you where you can find the different tools that are going to help you fulfill that particular role as a coordinator. 
So you have your all state coordinator tools. For example, if you look towards the left side of your screen, that blue box there, again, this is on your dashboard. So when you log into your account, you'll see this dashboard here. And you can see that um, as you are um, determining your um, or establishing for your college transfer scholarship opportunities for all state team members, you'll see the arrows here that you can follow um, that will show you the different form to help you do that, to help you report that information to us here at Phi Theta Kappa headquarters. And so again, you may be wondering why is it so important for four-year colleges to offer scholarships to our all state team members? Um, well, obviously, it's for a variety of reasons. We know that um, financial assistance is important to all college students. Um, and obviously, it's a wonderful opportunity to reward these students for their hard work and their outstanding accomplishments. But really, the more four-year colleges who offer scholarship opportunities to our all-state team members, the more these students are going to apply for this program. Um, so, you know, if they know that there's an amazing transfer scholarship opportunity at one of the colleges in their state for all state academic team members, um, that's going to encourage them to apply and to complete that application. Um, we do provide the details of that scholarship on PTK Connect. So that's Phi Theta Kappa's online platform that our members use that help them through the transfer process. It also helps them from a career aspect. So it also helps them determine, um, you know, what job opportunities may be available to them in a specific career field as well. Um, so the more scholarships that we know about that are offered by the four-year colleges for these all state team members, um, we include them in PTK Connect. Um, and then of course, we also encourage you to promote that at your all state recognition events. So when you're having those recognition ceremonies, um, we encourage you to invite representatives from these four-year colleges so they can get a first-hand view of these outstanding students that you're recognizing. Um, and then, of course, building those relationships um, with the four-year colleges as well. So the reporting form um, that you see in the, in the blue box there, that's what we would ask you to submit to us. So as you're made aware of these different scholarship opportunities at the institute in your state, um, we encourage you to complete that form and make us aware of it here at headquarters so we can help promote that um, as well. And we know that planning and hosting the Allstate Academic Team Recognition Program, that ceremony, um, that's a large part of what you do. And so you'll see there are a variety of different arrows there pointing to um, a several different links on your Allstate Coordinator tools. And again, um, this is all um, to help you plan and prepare for that event. So there's an Allstate certificate template. So you know that all of your um, Allstate academic team members receive a certificate during that recognition ceremony. So we have that template there for you to access. Um, we also have uh, information about how to order your Allstate medallions. So these team members also receive medallions at that recognition ceremony. And so we have a step-by-step -step guide and instructions um, that help you with um, how to place that order uh, for those medallions. Um, and then we also have the nominee biographical profile form. So once your all state team uh, members are um, identified and are provided there for you, um, you'll send that biographical profile form to your nominators. Um, most often your nominators um, are the ones that will provide that biographical profile form to the students that they have nominated along with a deadline. So um, you can get valuable information about that student to ensure that you're accurately recognizing them at your ceremony. So again, all of these forms um, are provided for you to use as a resource um, to help you. And then last but not least is the student and nominator file. So that's the white box that you see in the um, bottom right corner of your screen. These two files are regularly updated. And so we do encourage you to frequently log in to your uh, coordinator database 
to ensure that you have current information for your student files and your nominator files. So the example on this slide is for Texas. Obviously, when you log into your coordinator dashboard, your state will be represented here. Um, but these files are going to tell you, um, for the student, it will tell you the nominator um, for that particular community college and campus. Um, it will tell you if the student that has started the application, if they're a transfer pathway or workforce pathway student. Um, it will provide the student's um, email address, so you'll have the contact information for that. And it will tell you whether or not the student has completed that application um, and whether or not the student has been nominated. So again, when you're thinking about how am I going to ensure that I've got full participation from all of the community colleges in my state, these documents here will be your resource. This is how you will determine that. Um, the nominator file um, basically uh, provides um, similar information in that, again, you'll have the contact information of your nominators, so you can stay in frequent contact with your nominators. Um, but then again, it will also tell you from a community college aspect, how many total applications does that community college have complete? How many of those total applications are incomplete? Of that, how many are transfer? and how many are workforce. So then you'll know, okay, I need to send an email blast to these particular colleges to really ask the nominators to ramp up their, um, their outreach to the students to encourage application completion or just to start you know, that application process if you see that that community college is down in their workforce applications or transfer pathway applications. Um, so again, I really encourage you to frequently check um, these files here. As we approach the December deadline, um, these documents will be um, updated a little more frequently because again, we want you to have um, the most current information possible to work with as you're communicating with your nominators uh, as well. And again, we have another little, uh, the more you know fact in the top corner there. So if you're unsure of who your nominators are for each college campus, you can visit our All USA College Nominator Search on the ptk.org website. Or again, once you download these files here in your student and nominator files uh, portion of your, of your um, database there, um, that will also provide you with your nominator for a particular college or campus. Um, as you well know, those nominators may change um, from, from season to season and cycle to cycle. Um, so the nominator that you may have had for a particular campus during last year's cycle may have changed. So um, we do, again, encourage you to refer to um, the nominator search portal on our website. Or again, once you download these files, the nominator files or the student files, you can see uh, the specific nominator uh, for your state. One thing that I do want to also point out before we change slides is the second option there that uh, explains the all state team structure. And so as the uh, all state coordinator, um, you do have the option to create your own team structure. And so, as you can imagine, um, there are a variety of different structures from state to state. And um, you have the option to, um, you know, some states um, have moderate numbers of nominations. And so, you know, they may choose to only have one team. So all of the students who are nominated make up the all state academic team. Now, if you have large numbers of nominees, you may choose to have two or three teams. So perhaps you want to do um, like the state of Washington, for example, and you may want to recognize the top six students in your team or the top 12. That's what we mean by team structure. And so we do ask on the uh, information form um, that we do send to you. And again, that's part of your all state coordinator tools. That's one of the links um, there in the blue box. We do ask for you to provide us with your all state team structure. So we do want to know if you just have one team and all of the students nominated make up that one team. Great. But if you decide that you want to take it a step or two further and maybe you do want to recognize the top five students on your team or the top 12 or whatever the case may be, we do encourage you to please make us aware of that. Um, my colleague Laurie Brown um, works with all of our data reports and that will be very uh, important information that she'll need to know 
when she's providing you with your uh, team list. And so I know many of you had questions about a timeline. And so I did just wanna provide this quick snapshot for you. There's a lot of information on this slide, um, but as you may have noticed on the previous slide, this is on your Allstate coordinator um, database. So you do have access to this that you can um, download and print yourself so you can refer to it anytime that's needed. Um, but this just basically outlines for you uh, by month, um, what's going to be happening. So, um, you know, you'll see that, you know, in from September to December, that's when we're going to be working on representation and participation. So, you know, now is the time through December that we're really promoting, um, you know, to, on our college campuses application completion. And then, you know, again, as we uh, progress through December, that application deadline is December the 1st for students. So they have to have completed their application by December the 1st at 5 p.m. Central Time. And then the nominator deadline is December the 4th at 5 p.m. Central Time. And so those are some very important dates, obviously, um, to remember. And then we'll be working through um, judging uh, after that into the spring. And then in March, uh, we will have the judging completed and um, we will begin announcing our scholars and uh, we'll be sharing all of that valuable information with you during that time um, as well. And obviously you'll be planning your recognition ceremonies as well. And you know, we encourage you to report um, information to us as it becomes available to you. Again, there's an information form um, that we'll be sending to you. The deadline is in December for you to provide the information back to us on the dates for your recognition ceremony. And it's important for us to have that information as early as possible, especially if you plan to have Dr. Teacher Ladner participate in your events. So I know some of you have invited um, her to speak during your recognition ceremonies or to assist in, um, in awarding the medallions and that kind of thing. And so um, the earlier we can get on her calendar, the better. Um, so once you have set the dates um, for your recognition ceremony and you know your team structure and everything, um, we will encourage you to have that information submitted to us. Um, this timeline is in no way meant to be overwhelming for you. Um, I, of course, will be in touch with you um, throughout this entire process um, with friendly reminders as any important deadlines approach or as information is needed from you all. Uh, but I know it's also important for you to have this timeline as well um, so that you know how to best prepare um, and what's, what's going on too. So um, February and March um, will be um, certainly busy times for us as we are getting those um, scores from the judges and, um, and getting that information to you um, on the scholars. And then, you know, I did ask for um, some really good advice. I know many of you participating uh, in the webinar this afternoon um, have served in this capacity as a coordinator um, now for quite some time. And so, you know, you've got some great experience and, um, you know, tips and tricks of the trade um, that have made uh, your job um, easier or more streamlined. And so um, I did include some really helpful um, information that uh, Betty Dixon, our all South Carolina coordinator shared with me here. Um, and a really great tip um, that she suggested was to set an internal deadline. So two to three days before the actual PTK deadline, um, set your own deadline and definitely communicate that with your nominators. Um, and this is going to help, you know, our, your, yourself, your college and, and students who may run into hiccups along the way. Um, so obviously it's always best to have that internal deadline of your students um, and your nominators so that you can ensure any unexpected um, emergencies that may arise um, won't hinder uh, hinder you from being able to get those students nominated um, and in the pipeline for judging. Um, she also suggested um, including your VP for student affairs or your dean of students on your notification emails to PTK advisors. And so um, that's also something that we've suggested that would be of great help to you 
is using your Phi Theta Kappa chapter advisors on your community college campuses as much as possible. Um, these advisors have their own portal that they use um, that they can access to see uh, the students on their campus who have completed or who are in the process of completing their applications. So they can be a wonderful resource for you to help you again with that communication that's happening with the students, again, to encourage them to complete those applications if they're unfinished, um, or to reach out to those really top-notch students that they know would be you know, a great fit for the, for the scholarship program to encourage them to, to start that application and see it through. Um, so we do have an advisor directory. So again, if you're wondering, well, who is the Phi Theta Kappa advisor on these community college campuses, you can get that information from our website at um, ptk.org. And um, so we would encourage you to reach out to these advisors um, to, to request their assistance and their support. And then of course, include any um, student affairs or uh, Dean of Student representatives on that so that you can really engage everyone on campus and get everyone's full support um, on that, on that process, on that application process. Um, ask students to submit their current uh, mailing address. Um, we Again, we do provide the email addresses and phone numbers uh, for some of the students, um, but it's always good to have um, some additional contact information for those students if, if and when it's needed. Um, and then um, this was um, especially great advice, um, considering um, what we've all experienced with 2020 so far and to prepare a backup virtual celebration. So um, with, you know, the possibility of social distancing measures still being in place uh, in 2021, um, it may be a really great idea to consider how you might recognize these students um, in a virtual way. And so um, that was some really helpful advice from Betty. Thank you, Betty, so much for providing that information. Um, but again, um, we would encourage you to reach out to your Phi Theta Kappa advisors on these community college campuses to engage them. Um, again, they can look up uh, information on their portal um, and they can see Phi Theta Kappa members and non-members. So it's not just Phi Theta Kappa members on their college campuses that they can see from their portal. Um, but they can see all students from their campus. Um, and so obviously, you know, they've got, um, you know, relationships with these students um, and they, you know, again, can be a really great resource for these nominators and helping them identify best fit students uh, to move forward to the judging process. And so your contacts at Phi Theta Kappa, um, I'm your primary contact, Sarah Reynolds, um, for all things um, Phi Theta Kappa, Kappa All-State Coordinator related. <laughs> so um, please don't hesitate to reach out to me anytime you have questions um, or need some information. Um, but then I also have my colleagues, Laurie Brown and Kristen Ware, and I'm sure some of you um, who are returning coordinators have worked closely with them in the past. Um, and all three of us uh, are be more than happy to help you out um, in any way that we can. Um, and then you can also email us at scholarships at ptk.org. So I have provided our own individual email addresses, but you can also contact all three of us at scholarships at ptk.org. And then keep in mind that we do have um, a scholarship support page. It's support.ptk.org. We uh, provide a lot of really helpful resources here for nominators, for students who are applying um, in, you know, with the application and, and need tips and tricks for that. And then for you guys as the Allstate coordinators as well. So um, I do encourage you to visit the support library if you haven't already, um, as a lot of the questions that you may have, um, the answers are provided there um, in our support library as well. And so this is the conclusion of the webinar. And again, uh, we've hit some of the, the high spots um, with regard to your role as a coordinator. And um, I know that uh, you've probably have some questions for us and I have seen the chats uh, busy as I've been sharing the information here. So um, if you have not already typed your question or your comment into the Q&A box, I would encourage you to do that now. And uh, we will do our best to respond to you if, if you have not already received a response.
And then I know one of the questions um, that I see here from Catherine, she's asking, have you already started making students aware of the opportunity uh, through mass emails from PTK headquarters? Um, yes, we, we have been um, promoting this through our social media channels and we will continue to, um, especially again, as we start approaching that December deadline, um, we will definitely ramp up our, um, our uh, promotions about, about the application. Um, and we also have um, some special virtual office hours, um, and that's new. Um, we have not always offered virtual office hours um, for students, for you guys as all state coordinators, as well as for our nominators. All of you can take advantage of the virtual office hours for myself and Lori and Kristen. Um, so we'll be promoting those as well on our social media channels. Um, so um, if you just have questions or if our students have questions about the application, we're making ourselves available at certain points um, throughout the day uh, and week to, uh, to be of personal assistance to them. So um, I'm going through and looking at some other questions here that we may have. Um, yes, I see that one coordinator has mentioned that they are planning to have a virtual event for 2021. And they're asking if anyone else in the group finds themselves in that same situation. So is there anyone else here participating in the webinar today that's already made that decision to host a virtual recognition ceremony? And if you do, do you have any thoughts on um, what they could do for their academic team students? She's saying we normally have an evening banquet to give them their awards, but with doing this virtually, it would be good to hear any feedback from others. Um, so definitely uh, please respond if you are planning to host a virtual event and if you already have some ideas um, of ways that you're going to be recognizing your students. Um, COVID has definitely um, prompted all of us to be much more creative um, in a lot of areas of our, of our lives and of our careers. Uh, so um, we welcome any and all suggestions um, that you may have. Um, Lil is saying that she also provides her nominators with a checklist of dates so they know ahead of time what their deadlines will be and that's great. I don't think you can emphasize enough those deadlines. <laughs> we all know how easy they can creep up um, on you and on others and so um, I love that you provide your nominators with a checklist as well and I'm sure that's something that they appreciate too that um, keeps them um, keeps them in line with uh, with those important deadlines um, as they happen. And so um, the Stacy is asking about the timeline infographic for nominators, and we do have that timeline, and it is located on your uh, all state coordinator dashboard. So that is the timeline for 2021. And so when you log into your dashboard, you'll see that copy there. It's a printable copy um, or a, certainly one you can email um, to others or even, you know, to some of your nominators um, if they want to kind of see a comprehensive view um, of what that entire process would look like. And um, so students, um, will be completing their applications now through December um, and um, they can be nominated at any point. Of course, the deadline for uh, nominations is December the 4th. So the application will close to students on the 1st and then the nominations will close on the 4th. Many um, nominators do it differently. Um, you know, some nominators will nominate um, along the way. So they may begin nominating early, um, whereas other nominators may wait until after that deadline, uh, the student deadline has concluded um, so that they have all the completed applications and then make their decisions on nominations. So um, it does vary um, from, from person to person, I would say. And again, if you have more than one nominator, um, you know, they may choose to do it differently with regard to whether their workforce or transfer pathway. There's lots of really great questions in the chat and I'm just um, 
looking through them and um, picking out the ones that I feel like um, most of you would have the same questions about as well. Uh, someone's asking about a recording of the webinar. Yes, we are recording the webinar and we are going to place it in our um, support library. Um, I think I will also receive a link. I think I'll also have a link that I can share with you all as well. So I'll be happy to email that link to you um, at the conclusion of the webinar as well. I know my colleagues Laurie and uh, Kristen have responded with uh, answers to a lot of these questions here. So I would direct you to look in your um, the Q and A um, box to see a lot of the great responses to some of these questions from Laurie and Kristen. And so we, again, we do provide updated data sets of students and nominees until it's final, okay? And then after the judging process happens, we'll provide rankings and national scholars for all of the coordinators. So you'll all receive rankings um, and your national scholars for your state um, once that's complete. Um, until that time, you'll refer to your data sets on your coordinator dashboard. And Stacy is asking um, if it would be possible to see some examples of the structures that I mentioned um, for uh, the different teams, uh, the different team structures. And I think uh, another coordinator may have echoed that request as well based on what I'm seeing in the Q&A. So um, yes, we can definitely provide some examples of different structures. Um, and I, my colleague Laurie is gonna email some information um, to you guys as well. Um, on what those different team structures could possibly look like, if you'd like to do that. And so, um, you know, a great point that was made, um, you know, someone was mentioning they have 40 um, team members typically, and is that considered a lot? You know, I mentioned when we were talking about team structures, if you have um, you know, a smaller team, it may not be feasible to say we're going to do different structures. We're just going to have one team versus if you have a very large team, you may want to think about doing different structures, um, you know, that, that we talked about where you might recognize the top 10 or the top 12 um, scholars. And so um, with regard to this particular question, 40 um, is not considered unmanageable. So, um, you know, some states may have between 60 and 80, whereas others typically have over 100. So we do have a lot of states that have well over 100 on their all state team. And so in that instance, it may make sense to have different structures, uh, different team structures at that point. Um, and then, you know, when you're thinking about setting the date um, for your recognition ceremony, obviously we know that um, there are a lot of um, um, things to consider with regard to that, especially if you're hosting that ceremony in your state capital and if you have various state representatives who are participating in that event, um, oftentimes you, you know, are at their mercy with regard to the date that you schedule that recognition uh, program. Um, and so uh, one of the questions, though, is, you know, th that this particular coordinator typically holds their all state ceremony in early March. And what is the earliest that they should plan their ceremony um, based on the timeline, um, you know, oftentimes uh, states that host those ceremonies in March, <laughs> it, it's cutting it very close to getting um, their all state team member information. So, um, you know, we're definitely sensitive to that and try to get that information to you as quickly as possible. Um, it does depend on the judging schedule. Um, and so, uh, as my colleague Laurie mentioned in this response, um, you know, 
it, it's difficult to say when we would have national scholars available um, before the middle of March uh, of next year, um, but it's certainly not, um, it's certainly possible that we could. Um, so sometimes it's in the middle of the month um, when those are approved by donors. So, um, you know, we have to keep in mind um, that we require donor, uh, scholarship donor approval um, for a lot of these scholars. So before we can release them to the public, they have to be approved by the different donors. Um, so a lot of different checkpoints <laughs> have to take place before um, we're able to announce those scholars publicly. Um, I, I was looking through um, the different Q and A's and um, I did want to take a moment to explain if a student is um, a transfer pathway student, there are um, some slight differences in their application. So we do have a few additional tabs for transfer student, transfer pathway students um, that a workforce pathway student would not have. So for example, we do have a significant endeavor essay that that a transfer pathway student would be required to complete. Um, we have um, a, a workforce experience tab um, for our workforce pathway students that transfer pathway students don't have. Um, so we really try to tailor the application to the strengths of both types of students. And we know that um, workforce pathway students may have a lot more um, experience um, in their in their field um, that they would want to share or um, uh, professional associations um, within their their um, certifications and within their fields of study um, that would speak more to them and their interests um, versus your transfer pathway so um, when you're viewing those um, those applications um, of students um, you may find that they are um, slightly different based upon the student's pathway. Um, we do have sample applications. <clears throat> so I know one of the coordinators was asking about um, seeing an actual student application. We do have sample applications that we can provide. So um, if you wanted to reach out to one of us after the webinar, um, we'd be happy to share a sample with you so you can see what that looks like. And so um, obviously there is a process with the all state team rankings and um, providing that information. So all state coordinators receive the rankings and then they are sharing that with the nominators at each college. So you receive that information first and then you would share that with the nominators at your college once those rankings are released. Any other questions? These are all great questions that you have. And, um, you know, again, we are available anytime <clears throat> to answer questions that you may have um, long after the webinar is over. And we realize that there may be some unique situations that occur that, um, that you have questions about as well. So um, please don't ever hesitate to reach out again to myself or Laurie or Kristen. Um, as those questions arise. We have a few more minutes before three o'clock. So um, again, if there are any questions or comments that you would like to put into our Q&A box, um, please feel free to do so before um, we reach the, the three o'clock hour or three o'clock central time. I know you all are in different, in different time zones. And I want to take the opportunity again, just to thank you all for participating this afternoon. I hope that it's been helpful for you. 
Um, and again, please don't hesitate to reach out with any um, other questions or concerns that you may have after the webinar is over. Um, I will share a link of the recording with you all. And then again, it will be posted on our support library uh, for future reference, um, along with other valuable information as well in that support library. So again, please refer to that. Um, as needed. And then don't forget your uh, coordinator dashboard and all of the helpful uh, forms and information um, that you can find there, including all of your data sets. Um, all of those were actually just posted today. So all of the data sets, if you guys log in to your um, all state coordinator dashboards today, um, the data sets that are there are current. So um, that is the most current information as of today. So um, take a moment to log in and, and see how your how your community colleges are doing. Um, you know, go ahead and get a game plan together for how you're going to communicate to your nominators and increase those applications. And then Missy Saxton had a really um, great suggestion. She was saying that uh, Mississippi has recorded our, their awards luncheons uh, the past couple of years, um, if anyone wants the link. So um, she's provided her email address there in the chat box, msaxton at mccb.edu. Um, so that may be a really helpful resource for some of you out there to see um, how their awards luncheons um, are conducted. Um, and then she also suggests that maybe all of the coordinators can have a follow up meeting after all um, after everything is done uh, for next year's event. So, um, you know, that's a great suggestion as well, um, you know, that we've hosted this webinar in the beginning and then maybe we plan for uh, a webinar uh, at the end of this cycle as well to discuss um, you know, what worked, what didn't work, um, what, what would be better um, to have. Um, so we are always open to your feedback and suggestions about um, what would make things easier for you or what would be helpful for you to have. Um, so definitely think about um, sharing that information with us as well. And we'll definitely keep that in mind um, to host a follow-up webinar um, at the end, maybe in the spring um, of the year um, after everyone's had an opportunity to, um, to have all of their awards ceremonies, whether that's virtual or in person <laughs> for 2021. Um, if any of you also want to respond directly to me about um, any virtual ideas um, or things that you're planning for your recognition ceremony, I would love to collect those. Um, and then maybe we can compile them and share them with the entire group of coordinators because it looks, sounds like there may be several of you out there who either know for sure you're gonna be um, having a virtual event or you're you know, planning to do that, there's a possibility. Um, so if you want to send some information to me about what your virtual event is going to look like or any ideas that you have, I'd love to have those all together and send them to the entire group. Um, and then that way you can all collaborate together. So um, that would be uh, a, great, a great thing to have as well. Okay. If there are no more questions or comments, um, we will conclude the webinar for this afternoon. Thank you so much for being a captive audience. I am looking forward to working with each and every one of you for a new um, all state academic team cycle. <laughs> and um, again, I hope that um, you will all not hesitate to reach out to me um, and, and let me know how we can best assist you here uh, at Phi Theta Kappa headquarters. But until then, I hope you all remain safe and healthy, and I will definitely be in touch with you. So have a great afternoon, everybody, and take care. <laughs>